Oh, Red Bull's about ready to go do a little bit of shopping, it seems. But who's going to be the best pick? Christian Horner has recently opened up about the future driver market for the second Red Bull seat. There are outside candidates that are a little bit tempting. I will say this right now. Uh are, are these guys serious? The second Red Bull seat is the biggest poison chalice that ever did poison chalice. I would not touch that with a 100 foot cattle prod that starts the cars. Sky Sports News article did actually give their own suggestions about who could be partnering Max Verstappen. Three of them aren't that particularly good or likely. Lando, Charles, Alex, uh -uh. I do not think they will partner Max Verstappen at all. In fact, I've made two videos about these subjects that I don't really want to go into detail here just go and watch these. As for Liam Lawson, he wouldn't probably go straight into the second Red Bull seat. He would most likely have to go through the junior team, the Hugo Boss Bulls Racing Team or whatever it's going to be called, whatever clothes design is going to be branding it or all in. And considering that Daniel and Yuki are likely going to be teammates again next year, and possibly driving an RB19, however legal it may be, Liam's probably going to have to wait until 2025 to actually get his chance in Formula One. And as for my boy, Oscar Piastri, uh-uh, no way. There is no way that Mark Webber will allow his boy to be bending the knee to Max Verstappen after what he had to go through with Sebastian Vettel when he was at Red Bull himself. He would want Oscar to be in charge of his own destiny, and that most likely would be with McLaren. Why can't they just keep Checo for another year? Well, I mean, they could. It just waited out until the new regulation change and then maybe start afresh. The old Mercedes Bottas school of thought rings to mind. You know, just kick the can down the road. Just give him one year extensions to his contract until you get bored of them. Christian is trying to be encouraging to Checo, but we all know what happens when Christian's trying to be encouraging with the second driver of Red Bull. It doesn't tend to actually play out as well as they actually let it on to be. You know, they usually are gone by the end of the season. But let's just say for the sake of argument that Checo does make it to the end of his contract. Maybe just keep him around for another year and then just see what happens in the final year of this particular regulation of Formula One. As long as he doesn't rock the boat and 2024 is a little bit more consistent and he's a little bit closer to Max, then I'm going to pick Esteban Oc... <laughs> Esteban... <laughs> Okay. Okay, I'm joking with this one. Do you seriously think I would actually suggest Esteban Ocon to partner Max Verstappen after all of the chicanery that they've been through over the years? And considering how, let's just say, um, aggressive Esteban is with his teammates? Checo, he would know all too well. I only suggested it because Esteban is actually out of the contract at the end of 2024 with Alpine, so... Uh, okay, oh, never mind. Let's just talk about Daniel Ricciardo. I want to bring this up here. Come closer, okay? Daniel's actually older than Chaco. Do you want to use the old age debate? You can't really use it. It all depends on how well Daniel Ricciardo does at AlphaTauri or whatever the sister or junior team of Red Bull is going to be called next year. If he's able to hold his own and actually trounces Yuki, then sure, yeah, you'll get the seat in 2025 because he's marketable and people would love it. Formula One would be all the buzz again. I mean, they are now because Daniel's back in Formula One again and nobody really expected it. And, okay, they sort of expected it, but in a way they didn't. But in the two races that he's been back, though, it's been a real mixed bag for him, and Yuki's actually not giving up here. He's actually holding his own, and Daniel was okay in the Belgian Grand Prix sprint race, but in the Grand Prix itself, he sort of faded away. Yuki actually scored points. Red Bull will make a lot of money in the marketing department and sell a lot of merch. And they might have a decently competent second driver and he might get a win or two. But again, it all depends on how good that car is. And then going into 2026, who's to say that Red Bull will fall off the wagon like Mercedes did in 2022? It's all changed there. So another team might be better. McLaren might be better. Ferrari might get their act together with Fred Vasseur having actually had time to put his influence in there. Mattia Bonotto is rumoured to be the new Alpine team principal, so maybe Alpine, or whatever they're going to be called, might actually do well too. Nobody knows. Aston may be the big boys. And Fernando Alonso might get his third world title at the age of 55. And speaking of Yuki, how Yuki drives for the rest of the season and the next will define his future in the sport. If he is able to hold his own against Daniel and in fact actually outclass him or stay relatively close, and if the whole idea of the RB19 being used at Alpha Tauri or whatever they're going to be called actually rings true, Daniel might be content being in the other team because it's just going to be the 
dregs of what was already a great car, then Yuki might get the call up to the second seat. He might get at least one year. Yuki has spent the last three seasons fending off the likes of Gasly, Debris, Ricardo. He's held his own. Every single year, they all thought, oh, this is it for Yuki. He's not good enough. And then he proves them all wrong. I mean, Abu Dhabi 2021, remember? Yuki almost got a podium. He was fourth. Especially if Daniel decides at the end of 2024 to go, yeah, you know what, guys? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Then Yuki gets the call up. And I think he would bide his time because after all, in 2025, Yuki will be... 25 and then Max Verstappen sure he's not exactly old or anything like that but it's quite obvious that it's very likely he's going to be going off to do something else at the end of his Red Bull contract unless he really wants all of the records but he's never really shown any interest in the records the only record I think he wants is the Grand Slam record that Jim Clark has Yuki is feisty enough to bide his time and just roll with the punches of being the second driver because he's most likely to get wins or podiums and therefore he will then become the most successful Japanese driver in Formula One and that already is a big goal and what Christian Horner likes about Yuki Tsunoda is that he's a guy who likes to give it a go. When Alex had those moments he was like oh well Alex had a go of it and it was fine. Red Bull want drivers who are brave and Yuki is a good example and he's young too. A possible replacement for Max Verstappen if he can just hold his own and not get angry too much or at least angry in the right way. If you want to talk about good PR here then why not Nico Hulkenberg? Lore. Nico's older than both Checo and Daniel. He'd be like 37 or something when he actually gets the chance of the call up. Yes, I know, but like I said with Checo, just a one year contract. Wait it out until the new regulation change. Give Nico Hulkenberg his chance in a top car like Sergio had in 2021. He might actually get a podium. And imagine that Nico Hulkenberg's first podium in a red bull no less. The entire Formula One community would love Red Bull for giving him the chance to actually break that record, even though he is a really big holder of the record of the most races without a podium. And maybe he might get a win or even just at the very least get his second pole position. He's only got one and that was in his first year in 2010. Nico's actually pretty good. You can see what he's doing in that Haas, even though it hates its tyres after three laps, he can get that car in Q3. Can you imagine Nico Hülkenberg in a really complete package? He'd be great, and I think he'd be more than happy to toe the line with Max Verstappen being the team leader. He'd just be happy to be there. They'd be all forgiving about the fact that Max Verstappen wins every single race, or most of them. So long as Nico's on the podium, yeah, people will be happy. Pierre Gasly. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I, I, I kind of doubt this, but I wanted to talk about it. Like with Esteban, his contract ends in 2024 with Alpine. And the scenario that I'm thinking about here is that, say it doesn't work out at Alpine, or it becomes Andretti Cadillac, and they don't really see a place for Pierre Gasly with their team. So Pierre's left out in the cold. He's far too young to be kicked out of Formula 1 forever. He is pretty good. He has won a race. So who's to say that... Christian Horner observing Pierre Gasly from afar, like he did with Daniel and McLaren. And he might be just thinking, yeah, you know what? Give him another chance. So he goes over to Pierre, wraps his arm around his shoulder and goes, listen, Pierre, I know you had a troubled time of it last time around, but I think you've earned a chance for another go. What do you say? And I think this could be justified too, because Helmut Marko has rumoured that he might retire from Formula One or being involved in the main sport at the end of the next season, because he's not quite liking the dynamic with Oliver Mintzlaff, who's now in charge of the whole Red Bull Formula One campaign since Dietrich Mateschitz passed away, and he might just decide to walk away from all of it. So that resistance that has been there for all the other drivers like Danny Kvyat, Alex Albon, Pierre as well, that might be gone and Horner might be more open to allowing their former junior drivers to get another chance but would Pierre actually accept it maybe not because it would admittedly be a tail between the legs sort of a moment after all he left the Red Bull fold because he had to spend an eternity at Alpha Tauri waiting for a thing that would never come whilst Helmut Marko was around so going back it's a big admission of like yeah I picked the wrong team and speaking of a former junior driver Carlos Sainz is next there's a lot of talk going around the paddock about Carlos Sainz signing some sort of pre-contract, like a contract before a contract. You know, Alpine, that's how you write contracts. Is it with Ferrari? Is it supposedly with Audi, like everyone wants to talk about? It's almost like the world's worst kept secret within the Formula One camp. Sainz was a Red Bull junior. He was then loaned out to Renault, and then he decided to go over to McLaren and then Ferrari, and he's done pretty well for himself. So maybe like with Pierre, Christian Horner's looking over and just thinking, 
he might be a good second to Max Verstappen. You know, he's been a good second at Ferrari, and we actually know how to run a team, at least a little bit more competently, at the moment. So, perhaps Carlos Sainz might have been tempted with a far more organised team at a place that he was kind of destined to be. Sort of unfinished business. He was good at Toro Rosso, but then he did sort of get pushed out, and now he might have a chance to come back in again. At least for a couple of years, it's a top tier team who actually seems to be fairly good at actual consistency, good pit stops, good strategists as well. Science is a pretty good and consistent driver. I think any dream team would actually be quite good for having him in it. I would actually seriously consider him for a dream team if I had to pick. But Audi is pretty tempting though. Now you remember what I said about one year contracts being de rigueur? Let's talk about the guy who brought them back into fashion again. Good old Valtteri Bottas. Yeah, I don't think this would happen, but it's worth considering because, again, his contract with Alfa Romeo, or Salba, ends at the end of next season, so maybe you just stick Valtteri in the Red Bull car for 2025? Given the fact that Valtteri was meant to be a team leader, Alfa Romeo, and he's sort of been a bit too chill about it, I doubt that Christian would actually bite at the idea of Bottas's team going, hey, put us in the Red Bull car, eh? But no. No, no, I don't think Bottas would realistically go for it because Bottas is too loyal. Toto Wolff was very, very patient with him and let him down gently when it became clear that it wasn't going to work out at Mercedes anymore. They really need to put George in the car and Lewis wasn't going anywhere. He got an MG1 out of it. Everybody likes him. And Lewis can't stop talking about how great of a teammate he was. And having that from Lewis Hamilton, that's pretty big. If Valtteri did go to Red Bull for one season, it would be the biggest kick in the teeth for Toto. I mean, it would really, really suck. Could it be someone outside of Formula 1, perhaps? Like an IndyCar champion or a Formula E champion or something like that? Well, I doubt it. What's become quite clear in the last 10 years is that in the Red Bull camp for the second seat, you need to have somebody who is quite capable of scoring podiums and wins, who has plenty of experience, and is quite accepting and patient with the idea of you're not the top driver here, Max is. And therefore, you just roll along, get second place, or if Max has some trouble, get the win instead, get some one-twos, help us win the constructors, you're grand. That's all they have to do. And I think a lot of drivers will be quite accepting of this, but there will be a lot of drivers as well who won't be, who'd want to be the leader of another team, like with Lando at McLaren, Charlotte Ferrari, Alex at Williams. These drivers want to be in charge of their own destiny, and if they went to Red Bull, like seemingly a lot of people want them to do, they're not going to get that unless Max is in the sport or he decides to quit one day, then it's anybody's guess. And like I said before, Red Bull in 2026 might be terrible or not the fastest. So 2025, it looks a little bit clearer, but one year contracts perhaps, but the future of Red Bull is not set in stone, at least, you know, for the long term.